George Michalowski with Pittsburgh Sports Now. And I'm Jamarius Burton. Welcome to the Just Buckets Podcast. Welcome to Just Buckets. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Just Buckets. Just Buckets. Welcome to the Jazz Bucket Podcast, and this is the Triple Edition. Yep, that's it. After eight long months, <laughs> <laughs> we finally got the triplets on, man. Can y'all please tell the audience at home y'all names? So, Guillermo, Jorge, Federico. So, um, this was all of y'all first year, you know, on campus, yep. you know, playing for Pitt. Can y'all please tell everyone y'all experience on the first day on campus? Damn, first day. I mean, we took a visit, so okay. you want to say the visit? Or yeah, like, go ahead. So, I mean, I, I want to say like first day on campus. Okay. I remember um, Tio picked us from the airport. That's me and my brother. Um, I didn't know I didn't know Fede at the time. But uh, Tio picked us in the airport. I remember I lost my luggage. So I was pissed for that, and it took like 10 days to get back my luggage. But the thing is, like, T.O. picked me up, and as soon as I told him, he was like, no way, no way, no, 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 let, let me call let me call someone. And he started calling people, asking for my luggage, and I don't know. It was just like, that's when I first met T.O., like, for uh-huh. real, like. And then uh, we got to Bridges. Uh, we got to the new room because we never saw Bridges in our visit. And I don't know, it was just so nice. Like, we mm-hmm. came from IMG, we had like a little um, room for both of us. Mm-hmm. And then we get to Bridges, like, biggest room. Like, everyone has, every, every of us uh, has our a, um, a own, like, bathroom and, like, um, bedroom. So I don't know, it was just so nice. And going to the pit, like, actually playing there. Yep. I remember our first two days in Pittsburgh, we slept just with hoodies because we didn't have any, like, uh, uh, blankets, any pillows, anything like the the room in Bridges was empty. So I remember my first two days until my my things arrived from like Target, I was sleeping no no pillow, just on a hoodie on my on my couch, and that's it. I spent like that two days. Like I couldn't shower because I didn't have uh, a curtain on the shower. <laughs> I didn't have towels, <laughs> so I was showering the feet. Oh, okay. up, like, I was showering yeah. the feet. <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> We had we had to ask blows for towels uh-huh. because we didn't have towels, and we got the towels and we're like, okay, let's shower. And they were like, oh, we don't have curtains, so we end up we never we never shower. And then <laughs> I mean, now we got the curtains and we shower. I'm not saying that. <laughs> now we say we have to shower the pee every time. Yeah, Federico, how was that? So my experience, uh, my first time. Uh, so my like I was here like I've been here for I was here for my prep year. So Pittsburgh is not a new city for me, but when I got to campus, uh, first day here, I had the same experience with them. Uh, I slept with my hoodie on, mm-hmm. <laughs> on the couch, uh, didn't shower. I packed kind of light too, but <laughs> yeah, same kind of experience as them. I got you, man. So for the twins, I mean, uh, Jeff K, but you mentioned your visit a bit there. Yeah. Um, in March Madness, I remember your head coach, Jeff, was, was talking to the media, and he spoke about how that was probably his favorite, his best official visit ever, the visit that you guys, that you guys came on. Uh, what happened on that visit? Describe what your emotions were like, and did you know that you wanted to come to Pitt as soon as you left campus? I mean, it was pretty special. Like, I remember mm, since we got the airplane, uh, my parents, so it was my dad, um, his girlfriend and my mom and her boyfriend. So they all got like, um, for like not first class, but like the business class. Like you have like extra leg room, it's so nice. You got the actually <laughs> like the silverware like to eat. And and yeah, it was like, since that moment, like my parents were really happy. I'm not saying like they buy them, but no, no. I'm, I'm saying like um, we get here and I remember, I think I went with J- JC. JC was driving me. And he was with Teal. So I didn't know, I didn't meet Teal like till that time, till we start like, I don't know, like hanging out. But um, what I think was special was just like the the environment, like how how we, I don't know how to really explain it, but like how how everything like went fluent, like there was no like a awkward silence, like there's mm-hmm. always uh, someone um, saying something like, 
and honestly like uh, the campus is really nice like we we visit the pit we visit like uh, the school around and i mean my my parents are like big school parents like they they want us to study so that was a big part too like they were really happy here and i don't know which was like a special visit like i don't know what's the thing mm -hmm. that made it special but it was like how it felt what about um for you fetty um did you take a visit on campus? Explain, you know, your experience um, that you know made you, you know, come to Pitt. So my experience was good too. Uh, I was in a visit with Blake, mm -hmm. so I was hanging out with Blake the whole visit, and I liked how, like, the coaches was easy to talk to, easy to connect, connect with too. Uh, everything was just just great. Hey guys, Jamarius here. I want to thank the Scoring Factory for sponsoring the Just Buckets podcast. The Scoring Factory provides top-notch, detail-oriented training for basketball players of all ages in the Pittsburgh area. I go to P. Strobel at the Scoring Factory to fine-tune the details of my game by focusing on the individual skills that have gotten me to this level. Come get some at the Scoring Factory. It sounds like you guys mentioned T.O. obviously picked up Guillermo from the airport. But it sounds like every time someone mentions T.O., like all three of you kind of chuckle, like laugh. Um, you're obviously the big man on this team. Like, what's it like working with T.O.? And, and tell the fans, like, what kind of guy he is because he he's definitely seems like a character to all you guys. So T.O. is a person that pushes every day. Uh, he, he's a fun guy, fun guy to be around. Uh, he jokes a lot, but he takes, shit, uh, takes stuff seriously. He's just a character. I don't know. He's he's just Theo, you know. He's like that type of guy. Like he was unique. Like the way he acts. Like he's always like energized, and he's like never. He never stops. Like I never seen Theo. Like even if he's standing, he's doing something with his hand. Like <laughs> when he's talking, like always doing something. And I don't know. He's just like a special person. Like he 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 loves the game so much. Like he put like all his energy on it, and the way he teaches us like things, like he does it like with emotion. It's like you you want to do good like just for him. Like I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but like other thing as, uh, about Theo is he wants us like to get better. Like he be watching NBA games and texting me like, Fede, yeah. I want you to be like this player. Yeah. You see how he moves and things like that. He's always checking up on me, uh, like. How you doing, Kido? How's your day been? He's just there. It's yeah. like he's like family. Like yeah, 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 he's like family. He's checking up a lot on us. Yeah. Say something about your dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, he's he's a character. Like um, um, he's like. I think he takes like three coffees in the morning, <laughs> so he can and he takes more three more in the afternoon just the the the, the energy he has and uh, it's something really good for us because the way he pushes and the way he he put confidence on, on us it just make us better through the year I, th I think like everyone could, could see like how how we got better through the year and like one of the persons like that did that was was Theo definitely um you know, prior to y'all freshman year, you know, you know y'all all you know did amazing things this year. But explain, you know, to the audience at home, you know, growing up in a different country, you know, your dream of being over here and the process that it took to get here. Yeah. So um, things like in Spain, I don't know how even Finland works, but in Spain, like 
uh, NCAA like um, basketball is not really like famous. Only like if you are to play basketball, you you might know about it. Like and if you know, it's like you know about like Duke, North Carolina, like the top schools. Mm -hmm. You already know how it works. So for us, we didn't really know like about NCAA. We only knew about NBA. And it wasn't until like our junior year that we like we start like figuring out like what NCAA was. And we start like thinking about like coming here like to you know play basketball and study at the same time. So yeah, basically growing up in Spain like in in overseas is like pretty nice. Like um, where I'm from is like the islands is so nice. So the weather is always nice. So I don't know. It's just like I every time I remember home, I just miss home a lot because mm -hmm. it's just super nice. And you know, say something. So. Uh, the the way that I wanted to come to the States and play was uh, we got club basketball in Europe, so there's a lot of pros from America and stuff like that that play in, and there's, then they start coaching. Mm -hmm. So I got the one coach, Greg Joyner. He always like told us stories about USA, how it is, mm -hmm. how he played against these these schools and stuff like that. So I started doing my little. Richards, looking up schools <laughs> there. Then I started looking up highlights, uh -huh. and then it just grew me. Uh, then my first time coming to USA, uh, I came with a team from Finland to play U, and just I just loved it. I just loved it. Was that coach like your first experience with basketball, or like you know who put that basketball in your hand that you know get you motivated to continue to play? So I, I have told, I have said this story a lot. Like I'm a soccer guy. Like I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a European football guy. Uh, uh -huh. My dad grew up playing it. Uh, we used to watch watch it on TV every World Cup, every Champions League. Uh, but my mom, mm -hmm. he just said, "Well, like I started growing up." He said, "Nah, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nah." So he forced me to stop as as soccer and try basketball and uh -huh. that American coach was one of the reasons why I loved it like every, every time I went there I just it was fun it was fun that's crazy because I was a soccer guy too and like when I was a kid I wanted to play soccer mm -hmm. and it was my dad who told me no you're like too big to play soccer <laughs> like you're gonna have to play basketball so like when I w when we were playing soccer and basketball at the same time till we were like seven, eight years old, and like there was a point that my dad says, okay, you gotta choose. And of course, he wasn't my decision. Like, she, he made a decision, and he chose basketball for us. And of course, at the moment, I didn't want to do it. But then you start growing up, and you start realizing, like, okay, there's no way I can play soccer with these long as legs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just say my fat like feather, but instead of my mama, it was my dad. <laughs> so, you guys watched the World Cup. I believe, like in the locker room this year, while I was going. Yeah, on. like I watched all the World Cups since, like I think I was born. Okay. So, like World Cup for us is like in Europe is like a big, big thing. Like you wait four years to watch a World Cup, and I remember the final was like we had a lift in the final, and like there was <laughs> no way, there was no way I was missing the final. So I tell coach, 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 please, like this is the final. It's every four years. You gotta put it on the on the weight room. So we, I watched the 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 soccer final, doing uh, press course. Uh, while you were, while you were lifting. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. What was it like for you guys just to watch that to show your teammates? Cause like. So yeah, that's a funny thing. Like our teammates, except from Nate. Nate's the one who knows more about the soccer. None of them really know like what's going on and. Same with teammates, same with like coaches. Uh, none of them like really know what's going on, and it was just fun like to see the guys like because we we usually have like all the games in the locker room, so um, the guys would just stop by and like start asking questions and just like say funny comments because they don't really know what's going on. They just like guessing, <laughs> and it was just fun. But I remember um, I think it was Argentina, Croatia, and they went to penalties. And that moment, that moment was pretty special because, um, so we all wanted to like Messi to win, but at the same time, I wanted to Croatia to win. So, um, I was with Croatia. 
<laughs> he's, he's always the, with the other team. <laughs> but yeah, like we didn't care and like we just like stood up. We started like hugging each other for the for the penalties. And I remember like when Argentina won, like he started. No, my bad. It was Argentina and Netherlands. Yeah. It was Netherlands. Yeah, my bad. And and yeah, he started like like not crying, but like um, shouting. Like he, he was so <laughs> so emotive. And like I remember just still like just watching the game and just like saying random things. I got TSA, you. It's, just, it's so funny. The Just Buckets podcast is brought to you by the Oaklander Hotel, where relaxed luxury meets incomparable services. Located in the heart of Pittsburgh's Oakland neighborhood, they provide extraordinary service and an upscale experience you won't forget. Book the Oaklander Hotel, the best spot for your next stay. Alliance 412's mission is to connect the University of Pittsburgh's student athletes with local and national companies charity organizations, and the community to create lasting relationships. Alliance 412 provides student athletes the opportunity to enhance their life and professional skills. 412 Boxing is Pittsburgh's national youth boxing nonprofit. They give under-resourced Pittsburgh city youth an opportunity to learn to box and nationally compete. This offseason, I got my cardio and strength right at the 412 Boxing Gym. I appreciate y'all. I got a question for you guys. So, if you could build a soccer team out of the Pitt basketball roster, <laughs> oh, who yeah, would be no, at which for positions? Sure, for sure. So, we actually we wanted to play soccer this summer. Like it was like um, like the three of us and Nate and Will wanted to, but um, we play soccer like in PlayStation, like FIFA, and we have a we have a team already. So <laughs> this is how it goes. Nate is a striker. Uh-huh. Nate makes all the goals. Then we have left wing here. Uh, we got a two-way player. <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he some, so, sometimes he's there, sometimes he's not. But he plays wing, wing and. No, he, he, he plays the middle field, but he's always losing the ball, so we don't really like, like him. <laughs> so I play the right wing, and then um, when Will started playing with us, he, he never played FIFA before, so he was ass. <laughs> He still has though, <laughs> but he just played with us and like it was so fun for him like to score goals. And, uh -huh. you know, that's that's how really like we start like our relationship. Like uh -huh. how he grew was like playing FIFA for sure. That's amazing. Um, and is that how the triplets? You know, I think Nate is a part of this as well. Is that how it formed? Um, I I don't I don't think it's how it formed, but it's how it, like it got better. Like I think it formed just by going to get food every day because mm -hmm. we all live the bridges. Uh, so we would like have practices stuff, and at night we would text the group like, okay, let's let's go get food, and just mm -hmm. we would like at first we would go together to get food, and then Nate, I think he was bored, so he he decided to join. Mm -hmm. So we we start to go get food together, and that's how like we start like then after we get food we we together, so we start to hang out, and at the end like we live in the same building, so we always hang out together. Yeah. Yeah, the Giants getting food. Every time. <laughs> and yeah. did y'all get stopped a lot in these food places? And like, like Asking for please explain or... about explain you know that experience. You know, being the tallest guys on campus, pretty much. <laughs> you know, walking around every day, going to class, and everything like that. I mean, every time we walk together, it's it's so funny when people walk past us. They just, they kind of stop laughing, staring at us. Uh, but. Yeah, it's 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 super nice because we got amazing fans. Mm -hmm. they, they, they be they be yelling my name, be like, "Hey, Federico, Federico!" <laughs> but it's it's super cool. Yeah. It's all love. Mm. Yeah, the, the other day we we went out and we were just joking around, saying, "Okay, like, yeah, let's see how how many times we hear Federico." <laughs> and it was like twenty times, like almost, because all of them also like everyone was out. So, but yeah, it's just like funny to see how people react when we go by, like. They suddenly they be talking, then they they suddenly go quiet, and they pass by you, and they're like, still like, <laughs> <laughs> like come on. But yeah, no, like, and also we learn like we, so we can't stop. Like if you stop, somebody's gonna come up and like, hey, can we get a picture? Hey, super dangerous. No. Yeah, and if you're like in the stacked corner, yeah. you cannot stop there. Like that's little. Like if you. That's a hotspot. Like, if you stop like there for like five minutes, someone's gonna come up and ask for a photo or something. And I mean, everything cool. Like, we love to take yeah. photos, but it's just like sometimes, like you know, like yeah. you don't feel like taking a photo. Just keep walking. 
It's all love, but like <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're gonna start big time with people no. not giving fans like, pictures. One time, me and G, we were just walking, and a dude stopped his truck. <laughs> <laughs> he stopped his truck. He was like, "Oh, pit basketball!" <laughs> then he jumped out of the truck. <laughs> <and> it, <laughs> yeah, in middle of the street. Just said, "I need a picture with you guys." <laughs> there was cars behind him, everything. It was just it was just funny. Was yeah, so not in the case of being in mid traffic, you know, where they stop and take <laughs> pictures. <laughs> but yeah, like all good, like we never say no to a photo, yeah. so definitely. Um, you know, just talk about y'all experience, you know, this year. Um, you know, it was a bunch of sold out crowds. You know, what game or experience, you know, stood out the most to you all? I mean, we have to say the Syracuse game. That's because how how special it was. Mm -hmm. But apart from that one, I say. Let, let me get back to that. Let me think. Like I'll say definitely the Syracuse game. I feel like the Syracuse game was a movie, like literally a movie made and like recorded, because <laughs> like everything went like perfect for us. Like everyone in the team had a moment. Um, it was of, of obviously it was a special night because it was senior night, so it was like. So now, like, it was like a, like a thank you to all the seniors. Like, we have to win. Like, it's an emotional night, and to like every one of us, ha like, be able to have a moment mm -hmm. for us, it's incredible. And like the the epic ending of every movie is fish making the basket. Like, yeah. how like at the end the video of all of us in the floor just like together, you know. So, like, that's literally a movie because on the special night it end up how we wanted us to end up, like showing that like we're together on this and like we are like a big family. So definitely a like, Syracuse game. Syracuse and Mississippi State. Uh, mm. I wasn't playing, but I was. What was Ooh. it about that Mississippi what? State game? Because a lot of people, they don't know, that was the first four game we was on the road, you know, in Dayton, so we wasn't yeah. at home. Explain, you know, that experience. So I was out with the injury and it just was special for me. Like I was in the bench it was hard, it was super hard being in the bench, but all the shots, like Blake's shot, I was like, oh, no. Then he went in, I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was super special, like, uh -huh. watching us play. Uh -huh. Like, when, you, when you're in the bench or in the, in the side watching us play, it, just, it was just beautiful. Like, and that game ended... Was that Guillermo? You had the block with your left hand, I believe, in the final seconds. What was that moment like for you, coming over Tolu Smith and, and all SEC forward? Like, what was that play like for you? Like in in the moment, like you don't realize what's going on. Like he's in the moment. I remember he's he's a, it's a out of bounds, so like he gets the ball and he faced me, and I'm like, okay, he's gonna go to get a basket. And I don't know how I put my chest on there. I get the bump, and with my left hand, like I know I'm not thinking about anything. So like with my left hand, I just swipe and get the ball. And like I just I didn't believe it. And I started screaming. I forgot there was like two seconds in the clock. <laughs> I, I thought I win the game, but uh, like a special moment. Like in the moment you don't realize, but then you watch it again, and it's just yeah, a special moment. And after that game ended, you guys shared like a, a hug that kind of went viral around a uh, pit Twitter and NCAA when, tournament. You know, like that emotion was when the when the bath, when the buzzer sound. Uh, at first, I didn't believe it because they almost made that basket. Like <laughs> the, guy, the, the guy is <laughs> smoked that layup, and at first <laughs> I didn't believe it. Like I was hands on my on my on my on my on my head. Like what what just happened? Like what just happened? I don't believe it. So I was just walking back to the bench, like in trauma, like this, like what happened? And this dude came to me and like hugged me. And like, that was like a release point and like <laughs> all that stuff that happened during the game or like getting, um, I can say this word, but like getting like pushed around and like by like bigger dudes than me, like everything went out and it, w it was just, I just let it out. Yeah, I know, like I knew um, when I saw him, I knew like what he was going through because um, I remember like same thing uh, happened to me uh, when we first played Syracuse at Syracuse. Uh, I remember uh, Fede was out for foul, so I had to play that game, playing the five, and I was just like guarding Jesse Edwards, like he was pushing me around, like <laughs> I I was like so tired. And I remember we almost fought that game, like mm -hmm. they almost came back, 
and and yeah, also like I was in the free throw and my guy uh, grabbed the rebound, like offensive rebound, and he made it. And I was like, oh my god, like we're gonna lose from like because of me. But end of the story, uh, we won. So once like that buzzer goes off, like I I was like all the emotion, like all you're feeling, like you're so tired, like you feel banged up because I've been fighting against Jesse it was like the whole time. <laughs> And all, I, all you want to do is cry, like, honestly. Like, you have to contain because, like, you feel, like, so released. Like, you finally won. And when I saw my brother, I was like, he's about to cry. Like, I knew it. Like, so I just went there, hugged him, and he started crying. I was like, yeah, I knew it. Do y'all have, like, a twin intuition that you already knew he was? <laughs> yes, they do be having that. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, we don't really. Sometimes. Tia is funny. Tia will be always saying something. Like, he always asks me, no matter what, he's like, where's your brother? I'm like, I don't know. He was like, see, your brother always know where you are. I'm I like, do. <laughs> Every time he asks me, he's like, where's your brother? At first, I'm like, I don't know. And then I'm like, wait, wait, wait. He's coming in two minutes. Two minutes ago, two minutes later, boom, he's coming. Like, wait, Whoa. wait, I think he's coming now. Boom, he's coming now. <laughs> yeah, I think I have AC like three times. And like, I, I think I Yeah, they got crazy connection. Like, one time we was chilling in our room, and G just gets up and opens the door. Jorge just walk in the race <laughs> at the same time. So they be having this connection. And yeah. is that that same connection that we've seen on the floor together yeah. um, throughout this season? Yeah, uh, same thing happened against, I think it was the, our first game mm -hmm. when we did the, the thingy and I got a check. Uh -huh. We did it at the same time, <laughs> honestly. And yeah. we, didn't, we never talked about it. Like, it just happened like that, and it was the same time. Like, I don't know if, like, it has something to do with it, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know, like... Now that you've done it, is that something that might come back in the future? Like, nah. Uh, no. Maybe. Depends. <laughs> on the first game, yeah. until they, they, they get a take on that. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, um, uh, once I got that take, after the, co after the game, coach was like, don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and since then, like, I've never done it again. But maybe, like, someday I feel like it, I, I might do it. But um, I, can, I can promise on that. Fede, I want to ask you um, about your first year at Pitt because – I mean, at least from the outside perspective, we didn't really know what to expect out of you. Obviously, coming from junior college ball, like, what was that transition like going from JUCO to this first year at Pitt? Like, how did you kind of fill into that role? Because you were pretty much thrown into the fire pretty quickly there. Uh, so, going back to European basketball, like this, uh, this D1 basketball is is kind of same kind of. It's kind of same kind of basketball as. Let's call this basketball. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty similar. Yeah, it's pretty similar. So. After being a couple of years away from it, coming back, it just felt good. It just felt good. I got you, man. And, and when you were thrown into that starting role early in the season, were you nervous at all? Like, what, what were you feeling like? A couple of first games, yeah, I was nervous. <laughs> but it, it's like, it got better. It got better. And then easier. playing with the Twins, like, they had uh, – what game was that? Was that Mississippi State with the uh, – you know, you threw – one of them – one of you threw a bounce pass to the other – for the dunk in March Madness. Was that it, was Iowa State. That Iowa was Iowa State. State. Yeah. yeah. What's it like for you, Fede, like seeing them play together and pass it, that chemistry? This is like, it's so fun to watch. Like, it's just, it's just amazing. I don't know. Yeah, nah, that was amazing. That, <laughs> that you know, you're not lying. That, that was amazing how it felt. And I don't know, I feel like the good thing about our team, like, we have so, like, so much joy for each other like when someone does a good play like we actually all like celebrate, celebrate with them because we we want them to be good so when Fede be dunking the ball like doing his crazy things like even though like they might be like playing the same spot and like they're actually comp competing against each other they if he does good he's gonna he's gonna love it and if he does good he's gonna love it so and that's how it works like in the whole team so yeah basically like um we we had like great teammates, and that's why we had like great success. What? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a question. I actually have a question. Um, what was it like, you know, throughout the whole year, the ups and downs of the season? Um, you know, please explain. You know, that first year, um, and then you know, transitioning to the off season. You know, what do you feel like you learned from your first year? Um, that you can take moving forward. Yeah, definitely a lot of ups and downs. Um, I remember the beginning of the season was really hard because uh, 
um, I start like the the first game I started, mm -hmm. then um, the second game Fred started, and then when John come back, like my minutes like went down, and like you know like the the worst games I didn't play. Mm -hmm. So like of course like even being a freshman, it's always hard to not play. It's always hard to stay in the bench. Um, but you know I just keep working. I just keep listening to you all because. Um, Nelly, you uh, Nike will come to me after games and like, listen, keep keep grinding because like there's gonna be a moment that the opportunity is gonna come and like you gotta be ready for it and like um, the opportunity uh, start coming maybe with like with two minutes mm -hmm. and then after after those two minutes like Nelly will come to me and they will tell me like, okay, this was a step. Trust me, next step is gonna be a little bit bigger and next one is gonna be a little bit bigger and. You'll see that like, there's gonna be a moment that you're gonna be walking and you're not, not gonna realize it. And so it was two minutes and then like four minutes and like then like ten minutes and then like I had opportunities against like, Virginia against Clemson and stuff. So it was just kind of a process of learning of like uh, even like maybe now you're not playing just like keep working because mm -hmm. if you have opportunity you gotta be ready for it. So I think that gave me a lot of maturity and like. Um, also confidence on me, and also confidence on on, on the coaches, mm -hmm. on the, on my teammates because they always have my back. Yeah, and just now looking back, um, see how much I have grown, like as a as a as a man, and in basketball too, and yeah, basically that um, how much I grown and especially on my on my confidence. Yeah. Uh, I learned a lot this season, uh, ups and downs, the losses, the wins. Uh, I feel like what I learned is how good I can be and how many, like how much up, upside is there. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I could do much better mm -hmm. than what I did. So I think that that's it. That's it. What do you think is important for you, Fede, to, to take that next step? Like, what can you add to your game still that, that we haven't seen yet? Be more confident in everything I do. Uh, and not to be, like, not to be, not overthink anything. Mm -hmm. Just play the game. Yeah, yeah they, they look like they want you to start shooting. He might be shooting threes. Like, he's already shooting them. Like, he he was playing one-on-ones and shooting threes. <laughs> so it might happen, but yeah, like for me, like um, it was also like he said, like uh, learning how to adapt, like to your you know playing time, and like for me, the first thing was like always like it doesn't matter how it goes on the court, like stay positive, like with your teammates, like don't if because you don't play, you'll be like a dickhead now, and like you act like you start like feeling sorry about yourself, like no, nah, like I always try to. Um, be happy, like even though if I not play or I'm not, I don't have in, uh, that much importance. Just be happy, like uh, have a good uh, a good mood, and just show up every day to practice and try to get better and get better. Like um, that's basically what I learned. Is like you have to show up every day, no matter what, and if you do it, like you're going you're gonna have great rewards. I love that. Yeah, man. So we'll start to wrap up here. We do have a, a fueled by Roots question. So we were talking earlier. Roots sponsors the show, obviously. Gracious sponsor. I want to ask the twins first. You know, a lot of people have been talking about, you know, you guys bulking up over this summer, like the freshman to sophomore summer. Big time for you guys to, you know, get in the weight room, get in the, you know, kitchen, start bulking up. What is your plan for this summer? Uh, is there any diet plan for you guys? Strength plan? What are you guys up to this summer? So we already started playing. Like as soon as the season was done, we started playing with coach Pins, and it's basically a uh, lift um, four days a week. And the the thing like we, we have to step up to the three of us is the eating. Uh, we gotta start eating like uh, pros, and that means like not skipping any meal. Uh, make sure every meal is like the correct meal, like uh, enough amount of calories. And just like take care of um, that, and like Coach Bean says, it's not rocket science. He's just put the work in. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> 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 yeah, now what he said, like it's just um, we lifting, we trying to. Um, sometimes like doesn't really matter what you eat as long as you eat 
but yeah for us like it's gonna be like a game changer like to start eating and not not even like um, gaining that much weight but like getting the in the weight room and getting stronger that's what it's really gonna change the game for us just just the secret to success like getting weight getting bigger getting ready for the season definitely um my feel about roots question is what is y'all game day routine i as a as a teammate of y'all's, you know, we all have our own routine. Is there something special that you're listening to or, you know, what was getting y'all hyped up and prepared for these games that we were playing? Uh, long ass sleep and Call of Duty. <laughs> no, I actually had a, like a little routine. It wasn't like big, but I always like when I put my shoes, I always put my my shoe uh, my left shoe first. So it's my first uh, my left sock first, then right sock, then a left shoe and then right shoe. That's how I do it. Mm -hmm. And then I usually like um, we get in the weight room, we warm up with beans. Then I usually shower, like hot shower, mm -hmm. and then we I step on the court to uh, warm up with Teal. And that's like my little routine. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like my routine starts uh, when we have to on the walkthrough. Mm -hmm. um, a little before, like when you get in the pit. Um, so in that walkthrough, it's like the beginning of the routine. It's just walk through pay attention, then go eat, um, take a little nap or like go shower and then weigh room. And then that's when you start like, the, the, the game plan. Nothing to do with like your game day routine or yeah. your YouTube videos. Yeah, how does that, <laughs> what, from your point of view, like what's JB's routine like? Cause I know, <laughs> I know it's pretty crazy. JB is like an all NBA player, man. <laughs> like, like LeBron James routine, man. Yeah. Like eyes and everything. Like, but I respect that. Like. Um, I was talking um, with one of the the um, trainers the other day. Like he was telling me how important it's like to like take take care of your body. And he was talking about JB, like how how he takes care of his body. And like um, that's why we got him LeBron, right? Because like all, all the all the take that how how he takes care of his body. And and that's something like we probably gonna have to start doing if you wanna play. He's a, like a role model. Uh, <laughs> icing. Uh, foam rolling, hot tub, you be doing all that, all that, stretching. Swimming, <laughs> right? You hit, you hit the pool, right? Yeah, I mean, Fetty's my roommate, so it's kind of, you know, hearing him say it, but what? before game two, before oh, game yeah. two, he'd be on that pool getting right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. That was yep, no a blast having you guys on. Um, JB, you can close out the show, man, but that was, that was awesome yeah. to have you guys on. I appreciate it. After eight long months, you know, we <laughs> had the triplet edition. Um, I want to thank y'all for coming on. It was a pleasure being y'all teammate. You know, I hope nothing but success moving forward. I want y'all to all know y'all can hit me up. I'm going to be hitting y'all up. You know? <laughs> and, um, you know, we could just continue this brotherhood, man. Y'all yeah, are my sure. brothers for life. For sure. H2P. 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 <laughs> like the video. <laughs>